All right. Well, hey, you guys. Welcome. I saw someone's like, oh, it seems like this day took forever. <laughs> but I want to welcome everyone to the Unleash Your Inner Psychic five day challenge. Now, I'm doing something a little different from what I usually do. I'm actually streaming on Zoom and then from Zoom to Facebook. So I hope my video is okay. I hope the audio is okay. Do me a favor, just let me know um, if everything sounds okay, the stream is okay. Um, I'm doing closed captioning for the first, I don't, I don't know, I just figured out how to turn it on. I guess I've been doing it the whole time, but even the closed captioning is there. So trying to reach out to as many people as possible. And, you know, I asked you guys to go ahead and, you know, say in five words or less, what is your goal for this training? And as well, um, where are you from, right? Where are you joining from? Where are you, where, where are you watching this broadcast from? And let's give it one more minute, you guys, and we'll get started here officially. All right, let me just catch up on some comments. Everyone's saying, okay, looks good. All right, good so far. Everything's great. Okay, good. Thank you for the, the feedback here. All right, well, like I said, I'm trying something different today. I usually just go straight from Facebook Live, but I have some slides to show you and don't worry, it's not gonna be like some big PowerPoint presentation, <laughs> but I do wanna show some slides for you just so I could summarize things and it's just easier to do it that way by showing you a visual. Um, so this is why I'm on Zoom today. Um, so, and then Zoom from Zoom to Facebook. So I hope the connection sounds good, the connection stays and we'll get started here in like literally 15 seconds, you guys. Let me just get my bullet points out. And I see that number. I could see in the corner, like the number, the number keeps growing of the number of people watching live. Okay. All right. So I'm just taking a scan of the comments. A lot of great interaction so far. People from all over the place. Y'all are sharing your goals. Love it. Okay. I want to understand and develop them better. Understand my abilities. Help myself and others. Okay. Growing confidence again. Learn how to open my abilities. All right. Awesome. All right, let's get started here officially. I'm going to unpin this comment. Yeah. All right, so hi, everyone. My name is Joe Gakaskis, and I want to welcome you all officially to the Unleash Your Inner Psychic five-day challenge. All right, today is day one of the challenge. And for today, you know, we're going to cover a lot of intro stuff, and then I'm actually gonna be teaching you some tools, all right? But before we get into that, I know many of you are meeting me for the first time. So if you are meeting me for the first time, I'm gonna just type in the comments first time, okay? And if some of you are followers of my book, which by the way, where did I put that thing? I'm author of this book, The Journey of the Awakened Psychic. So if, all, if any of you are already readers of my book, just go ahead and type in book. Um, I know many of you have already taken some of my training. For example, my, my Unlock Your Psychic Gifts five-day challenge, which is more of a recorded, you know, everything was pre-recorded. Um, let me know if you found me through there. And as well, you know, if you, maybe you're just following me, like you got an email, out of nowhere, someone just posted like, oh, this, I got an email out of nowhere, <laughs> or I just saw an ad on Facebook. Um, just, it's always fun to see where people are, are joining from. So I see a bunch of comments here, book, book, first time, started the book. Okay, oh, wow, a lot of first timers, awesome. All right, great. So yeah, and by the way, the, the comments roll in so quickly, you guys, that sometimes I, I try to do my best to catch them all, but um, I'm, I may or may not get to all of them. Well, <laughs> Sarah said, I got an email out of nowhere, LOL. <laughs> all right. Well, no matter how you found me, I want to just introduce myself. And I know some of you have been following my pre-training, 
videos, which is fine. Um, and I know some of you have been following me for a while, but what, regardless of where you came from, let me go ahead and introduce myself. All right. So again, my name is Joe Gakaskis. If you're just joining the broadcast live right now, I'm author of this book, The Journey of the Awakened Psychic. And part of my backstory is there was one time, just quick story. Um, when I was a child, I was not even a teenager yet. I want to say I was like 10 or 11. And I remember just waking up in the middle of the night. All right. I was laying in bed and it was 2 a.m. And I remember it was 2 a.m. because I looked over at my clock and it's one of those old fashioned digital clocks. If you all know what I'm talking about, <laughs> this just tells you how old I am. Um, and I remember specifically seeing it was 200. OK, 2 a.m. It was 2 a.m. And my eyes are open. I looked up at the ceiling and all of a sudden I saw this glow of light. All right. And I look around, I was like, is that coming from a car? Is that coming from, you know, some other light, maybe in the bathroom somewhere, right? And I was like, no, that light is not coming from anywhere. So there I am staring at the ceiling and it was kind of moving like this glowing. It was just a bizarre kind of sight. Moments later, the glow of light disappeared. And what was I left with? I was just left with this message like, your grandmother passed away. And I was like, man, and mind you, I was only 10, 11, however old I was, I was just a kid. Okay. And for me at that time to get a message like that, it freaked me out. I'm like, uh-uh, what? <laughs> and so, you know, I tried to ignore it. I went, I went back to sleep, right? What happens the next day though? Wake up, my dad comes to me and says, hey, Joe, bad news your grandmother just passed away last night, okay? So you could say that that was one of my first psychic experiences, all right? Like getting this message out of nowhere and then come to find out it came true, all right? The kicker with that story, you guys, is that my grandmother was all the way on the other side of the world in the Philippines. And I remember when I heard that from my dad, I'm like, Wow, how could I have known that? Where did that come from? What the hell was that glow of light, right? So let me know if, if any of you could relate to that. Like you had some weird freaky thing that happened. Uh, maybe you got dreams or premonitions or you know, some of you get ringing in the ears or it could even be something as simple as like, you see 333-777-1111 all over the place, right? And you're wondering, is that a spirit guide trying to contact me? So let me know, right? Let me know what your story is um, and let everyone else know. And you'll start to see that when other people are sharing their story, you know, come to find out you're not the only one. But here's the deal though. When I was that young, having that kind of, of thing happen to me, I'm like, uh-uh, no, that's too scary for me right? I don't want that. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't tell anyone. Um, I didn't tell my dad, like, oh, I already knew grandma died. I didn't tell anyone. It's just one of those things, like, who do you talk to about that kind of stuff? All right? So I tried to ignore it. But as I grew up, the older I got, you know, street lights would start to turn off for me. And, you know, I'd walk under a street light or I'd drive under a street light and they'd just turn off. And it didn't matter where I was in the world, literally. I could be here. I'm in California right now. Um, I used to live in North Carolina. I was in the Navy for 11 years, and I was in North Carolina for four, year, four of those years. Street lights would turn off there, too. I even lived overseas in, in Naples, Italy. I was stationed there for a bit. Street lights would turn off there, too. And I'd ask my friends, I'm like, do they turn off for you? And they look at me like I was crazy, right? <laughs> like, no, what are you talking about? All right, they, they don't turn off for me. I'm like, okay, whatever. It must be just coincidence, right? So how many of you, like you get these things, ah, it's, it's just coincidence, right? You try to brush it off, like, ah, it's nothing. The thing is though, every time the street lights would turn off for me, I'd always suspect that it's like, is that my grandmother? Right? Is that my grandmother? 
it wasn't until later in life, right? After these street lights kept turning off for me thousands of times now. <laughs> and in my book, I share this other story of like, I'm literally sitting in front of my therapist and I see a similar glow of light and like a message from her father came through, right? I'm like, oh my gosh, what the heck, right? So it wasn't until later in life, I'm like, I gotta do something about this, right? I need to figure this out. I need to learn how to control my gifts because like there you, there I was sitting in front of my therapist and this freaking go, glow of light just came out of nowhere. And it's like, I couldn't control it. So let me know if some of you are like, hey, how do I control my gifts, right? Just type in the word, hey, I need to control my gifts in the comments. And so finally, I found a school, right? And I happened to live in San Diego at the time and um, you know, I went to a few meetups, I was reading a bunch of books by then, but none of them were really able to answer my personal questions, right? So when I found the school, just like many of you, you found my book out of nowhere, maybe you got an email out of nowhere, or you saw one of my ads out of nowhere. Literally, I was just on the website, I looked for psychic training, and this school came up, right? And I was like, whoa, maybe this is a sign from the universe right? You got to go check it out. But here's the thing though. It took me, it probably took me a few months before I uh, like, let, I don't know if I'm brave enough yet to go to a school like that. I was scared. I was afraid to put myself out there. I was second guessing everything, right? But again, street lights kept turning off and like, it's like spirit, the universe, God, whatever was like, Joe, you got to do this. It's time. It's finally time for you to learn how to control this thing, right? But not only that, I always suspected that there's more, and let me know if this is you, right? You suspect that there's more to just street lights turn off. There's like a message yet to be delivered. Or like, if I were to contact my grandmother or some spirit guide, maybe there's a message for me. But even more than that, like by that point, you know, I, I was a certified life coach, okay? Um, like, I, I just naturally wanted to help others, okay? So let me know if this is you. Like, you just have this thing where you naturally love helping people. You love seeing the best in people. Maybe you're the type of person, you just know how to give good advice. You're like that type of person. You're talking to someone and just the right words come out of your mouth, right? That, that was me. Um so there I was, I, I definitely wanted to help people. Like that's just my nature, right? But again, I, at the time I just didn't know how, how to control my gifts. So finally I got brave, <laughs> I signed up for the school and I learned all these tools, you guys, about how to ground, how to awaken my psychic third eye, how to give a healing and how to communicate with my spirit guides more effectively. And let me tell you guys, when I finally signed up for that school and started learning how to hone my gifts, control my gifts, all of a sudden, like this new world of like synchronicities opened up, doors opened up, new information opened up, like all this, you know, like new spirit guides started coming to me, meeting, you know, new kinds of angels, ascended masters. It's been awesome, you guys, right? But just like you, and I know many of you are at this point, you're like, you're not there yet, right? <laughs> you're not there yet. You're still here where you're still questioning things. You're still stuck. You're still wanting to understand your gifts more, still under trying to understand the meaning of it all, right? So it finally got to the point where I made it through the training and then I became a staff instructor at that very same school. And while I was teaching, I taught there for maybe five, six years, right? And I learned what worked, right? Because I, I worked literally with thousands of students during that time. I learned what worked, I learned what didn't work. I, I noticed what the most successful students were doing. And I noticed what the least, ex, least successful students were doing in order to hone, control, awaken, and master their gifts, right? So I took the best of what worked, you know, and I, I put it all together in a 10 step guide. And that's how my book was born. Okay. And let me tell you guys something. Speaking of using my gifts, right? Um, it took me a while to write the outline for my book. But once I got the outline done, 
you know, I started just channeling. Literally, I was just typing on my keyboard. And it's almost like my fingers did the moving, right? Within five days, you guys, like the whole book, the manuscript for the book at least was born, okay? Um, so there, there's a lot to be said that when you start stepping in to this world of energy, things are gonna open up quick. You're gonna start channeling information, downloads. I saw some people saying downloads. Um, stuff is just gonna start coming up to you. And this is what I mean, a whole world of, is just gonna open up for you, okay? Now, just to cap off my own awakening story, um, the book went on to win an award by Soul and Spirit Magazine for best psychic book. Um, and I was really proud of that. I was like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna win, right? But I, I entered the contest and this is a magazine out of the United Kingdom. I won, right? And I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe that's the universe's way of saying, hey, validation, right? That I'm onto something, that this is valuable stuff. And so, you know, while the book was great, you guys, right? Like I said, it was an award-winning book. It was still missing something. What was it missing? Well, it's one thing to read about this stuff, you guys, right? But it's another thing to experience it all. And here's what I mean. Like you could read about riding a bike, right? And you say, oh, I read about riding a bike. I know how to ride a bike because I read about it, right? But when you hear me say that, that sounds pretty ridiculous, right? <laughs> it's like, no, you don't. You don't know how to ride a bike, right? Just because you read about it, okay? So because I saw that need and because people are like, Joe, do you have anything recorded? Hey, Joe, can I ask you a question? Hey, Joe, do you have anything that we could watch live or or do you have like a Q&A session, right? So it's from that that I decided to do a live event like this, okay? Where you could interact with me live, where you get the instruction and where you go beyond just reading about it, right? To where you actually get to experience it. And not only that, right? There you are experiencing it. You get the feedback. Right? It's like, hey, Joe, I saw this weird energy. What do I do next? Or, hey, Joe, you know, I'm trying to ground. I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. Can you give me some tips? Like even just that back and forth interaction where literally it will take me 20 seconds, you guys, to answer that question. But imagine 20 seconds versus waiting a whole other year or a whole other week. Or for I know for many of you, you've been trying to hone your gifts for years, right? Let me know in the, in the comments, um, like how long have you been working in, on your gifts? Has it been a few days, weeks, months since childhood like me? <laughs> um, I'd love to get your feedback. All right, so that is why I'm putting this challenge together, right? Just all of that. So you get beyond just reading about it to where you could actually have some experience about it to where you get some confidence, okay? All right, so yeah, I see three years, six months, okay. And again, the comments come in so fast. Yeah, sometimes I can't keep up, but I, I try to keep at least a like a side glance at it. <laughs> so some of you like since childhood, eleven years, a year so far, three months. I closed up as a teen, four years recently, but totality my entire life. Okay. The other thing that people are missing, you guys, is community. All right, so I'm here in the San Francisco Bay Area and literally I could drive, driving distance to six different psychic training schools here. <laughs> Pretty crazy, right? That's just California for you. Um, but I know for many of you, you don't have like a school you could drive to, right? You don't have, you, I know there's like one, one of my students, she li lives in like some far corner of Canada. I have one that lives in Alaska they don't have anyone. They don't have, they don't even have a local psychic. Like they're it, right? They're all alone, no one to talk to. So this is yet another important part of this training is the community. So the more you guys share, right? And I love all the sharing that I'm seeing here. The more you guys share, the more you realize like, whoa, I'm not the only one, right? So talking about community, this is yet another 
side benefit to putting this together live. All right, so that's my intro. Um, that's why I put the training together. And that's why I wrote my book. And that's why we're here today. All right, so is all of this making sense so far? Just kind of give me some, it's like making sense. Yes, are you excited? <laughs> Let me know. All right, let me just, sometimes I just talk and I forget exactly what I'm supposed to be covering. So I'm just catching up on my bullet points here, just making sure I got everything. Okay, all right, so a lot of you are like, yes, absolutely, I'm excited, awesome. Now, let me tell you something about the free, this free Unleash Your Inner Psychic five-day challenge itself now. Just so you know, it's a, normally a $97 course, okay? but you're getting it for free and full disclosure, you guys. Okay. Just so there's no surprises. Like my goal is to deliver to you so much value that you, you'll want to sign up for my next upcoming training. Okay. And the idea is, you know, it's like, Whoa, Joe's giving away this much free stuff, right? Imagine what will happen when you do invest in my full training. Okay. So again, full disclosure, it's like, uh, Joe, are you going to try to sell us on something? Well, yes, <laughs> I will. But, you know, the goal is that you check it all out first, right? And if you love what you learn, then I'm happy to introduce what I have to offer. And let me tell you guys that for those of you that complete all five days of the training, I'm going to offer a really cool deal for you, a real special deal. Um, and when I do offer this, like literally it's not even found on my website, you guys, okay? Um, and let me just say, yes, yeah, Steph is like, I was just gonna ask if you have any other training. Oh, hold on, you guys. As you guys might know, I have my dog and you know, I have to do this live with my door closed and sometimes she'll just be at the door, mur, mur, let me let me in, let me in. So uh, she's 13 years old, but she's like full of drama. <laughs> she just likes to uh, sit under my desk during these live events. So, all right, you guys. Um, one more thing I want to say about the training coming up, you know, and this is just me planting a seed for you guys. You know, some people are like, I don't know if I should do this now, right? I don't know if I should invest this. But one thing I want to plant the seed for you guys now is that I know many of you are healers, right? You naturally love helping others. You naturally love giving to other people. But the thing is, you give so much of your energy away to others that who do you forget about? You forget about yourself, right? Tell me if you can relate to that. You, you just give, 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 but you forget to give to yourself, all right? So over the next five days, right, make the time, set aside the time over the next five days to really give yourself the space for this training. Do y'all get that? Like even now, if someone's like bothering you, it's like, hey, yo, for the next hour, can you not bother me? Give me some space. This is time for me, okay? So give, it, give yourself that space, give to yourself. And not only that, allow yourself to receive. It's so funny, I had a friend of mine and you know, I wanted to treat her out for her birthday. And she felt so bad about like, no, don't spend your money, don't spend your money. I'm like, I want to spend my money. Can you just at least receive? <laughs> right? So she's like, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. But she never, she's so, she's someone, she's always giving, 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 but she never gives to herself, let alone al allows herself to receive from others. Okay. So part of the energy that I'm sending you guys for the next five days, it's going to be very much a healing kind of an energy, a healing experience for all of you, okay? And, you know, when you develop the side of yourself, just really get that when you could receive the training, receive the healing, how much more effective will you be as a healer, as a person that gives, as a person that helps others? Does that make sense? All right. <laughs> 
So I see some people are like, open, lock the door. Okay, great. Uh, put my phone on, do not disturb. Awesome, awesome. Be open to receiving. Yes, okay. All right, you guys, uh, let me see. What else do I want to cover before I get into our stuff here? Okay. Now, again, the reason why I'm on Zoom is because I want to show you something. Um, so, yes, this is a five-day challenge. Now, I know some people are like, Joe, what does all this have to do? What's the bigger picture? Okay. So I just want to share this with you guys real quick. And again, forgive me, this is my first time on Zoom to Facebook, so I might fumble around, fumble around with different uh, buttons here. Okay, can y'all see my screen okay here? I have to switch back and forth to the... Uh, can you see the, the slide on my screen? Just, just let me know real quick. Yep, okay, great. So uh, let me put it on full screen. All right, so while it's on full, full screen, you guys, I can't see the comments, so. All right, now, when it comes to this Unleash Your Inner Psychic five-day challenge, what I want to share with you is that it's just a small piece of a big hole. And like I said, at the end of the five days, I'm going to be making an offer for you for more advanced training. But what I want to do now is just give you a, a hint of it, right? And like I said, it's only day one of the challenge. I want to at least plant a seed, though, for you guys of what's possible when you do open up your gifts even more. So for me, there's what I call the complete psychic framework. Now, what is the complete psychic framework? Well, I believe that there are four components to being what I call a complete psychic. All right. Now, in order to be a complete psychic, I have uh, a method I want to share with you, and I call it the psychic awakening mastery method. Now, what is a psychic awakening mastery method? Well, there's four parts. And again, this is what it takes, what I consider that it takes to be a complete psychic. First is reading mastery, all right? So the Unleash Your Inner Psychic Challenge is, a, is the first part of learning how to read energy. That's what I mean by reading mastery. And this is where the third eye activation comes in, which you're gonna get by day three and four of the challenge. And in my more advanced training, I teach what I call crown chakra ascension, All right? And crown chakra is right on top of your head. Your sixth chakra is right here. And I'm going to cover more of that as we go through the next five days. But just know that, you know, it's kind of like rising up from just learning how to feel energy to where you could actually see energy, tap into your higher knowing, and then you just become, you open up your gifts to a whole other realm dimensional realities. You could start to read stuff like past lives, Akashic records, contact your spirit guides, all of that, okay? But it starts with reading mastery. Then once you've got the reading piece of it all, right, your third eye is activated, the next part of it all is what I call healing mastery. And when you can learn to heal others, and this first bullet point here about karma-free healing, all this means is that imagine you could heal someone without using your own life force energy, right? And in order to heal others, I believe that you also need to heal yourself, right? And the way that I teach my programs is that when you could heal yourself more deeply, your ability to heal others becomes that much more powerful, okay? And then you could heal others and um, by the way, what I mean by karma-free healing is that you're not using your own life force energy to do, do so. You're not giving away your energy, right? And earlier, I'm like, um, many of you are just giving, 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 but you're not receiving, right? So when you could heal in a karma-free way, you know, that is like step two of becoming a complete psychic. Now, what's step three? Step three is spirit guide communications mastery, all right? So What's involved with this is advanced psychic boundaries, 
learning the language of spirit, right? Because when you start communicating with beings without a body, um, there's a whole other language to that. And some of you are already gl getting glimpses of it, right? You might hear spirit, you might see spirit, or a spirit just taps into your higher knowing or your dreams. Um, but, you know, it's really fun when you can start to work with spirit and start to channel healing energies. And I've done a couple of demos, you guys, on, on Sundays, usually I read. Actually, I usually do public readings at this time. Um, but, you know, you've probably seen me in my public readings where, like the last week, I worked with Archangel Michael, okay? And I just held space for Archangel Michael to channel healing energies for the group. And many of you are like, oh, my God, I totally felt that. Um, I got, you know, just energy shifting and moving, transforming, got messages, right? So when you can get to this level of your psychic awakening mastery, um, like, it's really cool. It's really cool, you guys, because there's so much out there in the world of spirit for you to get. And then finally, there's what I call spiritual. Let me move this thing out of the way. There's what I call spiritual manifesting mastery. And this is where you can start working with your spirit guides to help you manifest things. So what I mean by that, like if you want new clients or if you need more money, right? Or if you need a parking spot or if you need whatever it might be that you wanna manifest in your life. What if you could work with your spirit guides to help bring that in for you so you can manifest that, okay? And you know, during, for, for spiritual manifesting, there's, there's still more energy healing, clearing blocks to your desired reality, like all of that, all right? So in all, reading mastery, healing mastery, spirit guide communications mastery, spiritual manifesting mastery, this is what I consider to be a complete psychic. And you get all this via the psychic awakening mastery method. Now, before we jump into all that though, let me just point out <laughs> that it all starts with the unleash your inner psychic challenge. All right, so let me just check in with the comments. Is all this making sense so far? What do you think about this? Is, is it stuff called to you? Is it exciting to you? And let me... Uh, I have to switch back and forth, you guys, to the comments. All right, so I'm getting some yeses. Yes, okay. So some of you are like, yeah, that's that's what I want. Okay. Yes, excited. Yes, super excited. Yes, it's making sense. Okay. <laughs> awesome. And Rosa said. Yes, do you teach all of this or is it part of different levels? Actually, yes, glad you asked Rosa because that's what I'm gonna show on my next slide actually real quick. And again, this is just a high level overview, you guys. Um, I don't wanna get jumped too far ahead, but let me, I know people like to ask us why I'm doing this now. Like, hey, what's, what's in store? Well, coming up on, let me just show the whole slide here. On October 27, I have what's called, uh, I, I have an accelerator group farming now, right? So if you're interested in 12 weeks to Psychic Awakening Mastery and where you actually do learn all of this, right? Um, I do have a new group that's forming on October 27, okay? So stay tuned for day five, because this is where I actually talk about this. I know many of you are excited already based on the comments. But, you know, I want to get you through the Unleashed Challenge first. So you learn some basic tools, build some confidence. And then by that point, you're ready to hear all about it. And yeah, I'll talk about that more on day five. And just so you know, right, again, full disclosure, I will have a special deal for everyone who completes all five days, right? And, you know, this information is not found on my website, right? So definitely you want to check in, um, especially on day five when I share that information. Now, let's see. Let's talk about the challenge real quick, okay? So again, I don't wanna to jump too far ahead, right? What we're covering now is like, even though there's all this, what we wanna focus on now is just the Unleash Your Inner Psychic Challenge. So let's talk about what's covered, okay? Each day during the challenge, I'm gonna teach you a new tool to awaken your psychic third eye. On day one, uh, this is all the intro stuff, and we're gonna cover today the number one tool you must learn. Day two, 
I'm going to teach you all about psychic protection and releasing the three energies that are blocking your gifts now. Day three is third eye activation day. And then day four, it's more of like a putting it all together. We're going to practice. Okay. Um, and then by day five, this is where you ascend your psychic third eye for limitless access. And I'll talk about and I'll describe to you what that involves, what that's all about, the advanced training that's in store that's coming up on starting on October 27. And as well, you definitely want to check it out because I'm going to be doing a drawing, right? Literally, I'm going to everyone that completes the challenge, I'll be doing a drawing so you could win some prizes. And again, I'm going to be presenting that special offer to you. Um, and I should have put the days. This is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. Uh, let's see. Speaking of prizes, some of you are like, oh, what, what prizes are do you have? Well, each day, what you're going to do is you're simply going to type in hashtag day one live. If you're watching live, so go ahead and do that now if you're watching live. Or type in day one, hashtag day one replay if you're catching the replay. I know not everyone could catch it live, which by the way, the replay, um, because I'm, I'm streaming this to Facebook, as soon as the broadcast is done, like within five minutes, um, Facebook will have the replay available right there in the group, okay? So go ahead and type that in now, hashtag day one live. And the idea, you guys, is that tomorrow, right? You show up, you're going to type in hashtag day two live and then hashtag day three live or hashtag day four replay. Well, just as long as you get all your hashtags, right? When you get all five hashtags, that enters you into a drawing for prizes, okay? So what are the prizes? Well, complete all five days and you get a chance to win one of these prizes. So first prize, you get a 90-minute deep chakra healing Okay, this is a $250 value. This is literally what I charge the public when I do my reading. So if you were to go to my website, you could see this for yourself. Um, so first prize, right? Complete all five days, put in all your hashtags. Um, you get a 90 minute deep chakra healing, okay? Um, second prize is a 60 minute psychic reading. It's a $200 value. Third prize, third, fourth, and fifth prize are 30 minute psychic readings. And I usually charge 150. I think that's, I think I charge 175 now. I don't remember. <laughs> I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, you guys. And um, just quick story. Like I remember chart when I first got here, I was charging like 125 for an hour reading. Um, and I'm in Silicon Valley, right? So, so um, this one woman, she's like, I almost didn't go with you. You, you charge too cheap. <laughs> I'm like, so I have to raise my prices just because of where I live. But these are, you know, I'll told you guys, these are real world, uh, real world values. And here's the kicker, you guys, the drawing will be held Thursday evening, right? Day five, you must be present to attend to win, okay? And what I'll do is I'll, I'll enter, literally I'll copy paste everyone's name into a wheel and then you'll see the wheel spinning and literally I'm doing this live, okay? So it's all gonna be completely random. All right, uh, oh yeah, one more thing, the schedule, so. Today we're meeting 12 to 3 p.m. E or 12 or 3 p.m. Eastern today. On day two to five, we're gonna meet at 6 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. So, you know, just do your time zone. It's 6 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Mountain, 8 p.m. Central, and, uh, ooh, that's a typo. It should be, sorry, let's fix that right now. 9 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> All right. And the way it'll go is usually we're going to go up to 45 minutes and up to a 30 minute Q&A every day. Um, but really, I, it might go a little longer if I get lots of questions. Today is going to go a little longer just because of the intros and everything, right? But we won't usually go as long as we're going today. And again, a reminder, you must be present on day five live for the live drawing to get a chance to win. All right, so again, type in all your hashtags every single day. Catch up if you can't be live. You could still type in hashtag day one uh, replay, okay? All right, let me see if, yeah, that's all I have for slides, you guys. So let me stop sharing. And let me get back to the comments. Okay, there we go. All right, so 
any questions about just the format of it all, you guys? So let, before I get into like the actual lecture, we haven't even got to the lecture piece of it all today. Um, any questions about the format, the schedule, the contest, anything at all? Let me pause for a minute. All right, yeah, some of you like caught my, <laughs> bunch of you like day one live, awesome, awesome. Okay, y'all caught the 9 p.m., great. Okay, yeah, and it's recorded, so don't worry about it. like work schedule, I totally get that. Like even for me on the West Coast, if I, you know, when I used to work in corporate, like I'd still be driving home from work at 6 p.m. So Don is saying, it's just all exciting. Okay, awesome. Now let's get into, let me just get my bullet points once again, make sure I'm covering everything. Let's officially get into the lecture. Uh, oh, wait, hold on, let me answer questions real quick. Nathan's asking, will we learn about Earth star or soul star chakras or just the main seven? Yeah, Nathan, great question. Um, in my more in my more advanced training, right, the Psychic Awakening Mastery Method, I only teach about the seven, uh, the seven traditional chakras, um, but I do have another course that I teach maybe once a year where you learn all about the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th chakras and the, the root chakra or soul, your earth star chakra, soul star chakras, et cetera, okay? Um, depending on where you learn, right? Some people call it the transcendent chakras. That's how I was taught. I was, I was taught it as the transcendent chakras, but you know, whether you say soul star chakras, transcendent, like it's all the kind of the same thing, okay? So great question, Nathan. That's definitely something that I do teach, um, especially for my more advanced training. All right, awesome. Now let's get to the lecture, you guys. And again, we're gonna probably go for another 45 minutes here. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get in everything I can. Oh, one more question here. Zane, should we do any preparations before each session? Get enough sleep, meditate, clean diet, et cetera? What do you do? Great question. Yeah, um, funny. I actually got a really good night's sleep last night, you guys. Uh, leading up to the challenge, um, I you know there's so much to do. That's why I don't do these very often live. So much stuff to do in the background. So, um, like it was all I could do to to just be grounded. <laughs> but today I got some really good sleep. So yes, um, eat well, right? Sleep. You do. You will have homework. I'm going to teach you some tools. So you definitely want to. Like if I say meditate, I'm going to teach you a, a way to meditate here, but just know the meditation itself literally only takes 10 minutes, okay? So if you have an extra 10 minutes from today till tomorrow, um, that's part of your homework, okay? And I'll, I'll talk about that when we get to the end for sure. Okay. <clears throat> Lee says, I don't sleep much. I can't. Yeah, same here. I don't, I don't usually sleep really, really well because uh, just I have a lot of ideas. So, <laughs> all right, let's get to the lecture, you guys. I want to just say that um, I don't, because I don't do this live very often, um, like I've learned some new stuff. Okay. Ever since I, you know, I know some of you have been through the recorded challenge. Just know with this live training, like I've got some new stuff to teach you guys. So I'm really excited to be bringing this to you guys. Um, and I wanna say it's like cutting edge stuff, all right? And stuff that I've not even taught during the challenge. Now, before we continue though, I wanna make one more note, all right? When you go through this challenge, I want you all to have fun, okay? And I want you all to just have lots of amusement about everything. All right, so I'm gonna type in the word amusement, fun in the comments. And let me tell you guys, the moment you try to take this stuff too seriously, all right? The moment you try to take this stuff too seriously is the very moment your gifts will start to not work anymore. They'll just turn off, they will shut down. And you're gonna be like, Joe, I can't access anything. This, my gifts aren't working. And usually when people are like that, oh, nothing's working, right? You got into serious mode, okay? So you gotta stop that. You gotta get, have fun with this. And when I say amusement, you guys, 
imagine a kid literally like playing with Legos or, you know, back in my day, it was like Tinker Toys. I don't know if kids still have Tinker Toys. <laughs> um, but there they are, they're exploring and having fun. Oh, look what I built. I built this thing. And you're looking at that and like, what is that? It's like, it's a flower. I'm like, oh, okay, it's a flower. That's amazing. You did a good job, right? But kids are just like that, right? So what if you could just give yourself permission to be in that childlike space? Have fun with this, you guys, okay? Because again, I'm going to say this again. You hear me say it over and over. Have fun, be an amusement. Don't take this stuff too seriously. The irony, though, is that the less seriously you take this stuff, the more things will actually open up for you guys, okay? And the quicker they'll open up for you guys. All right, so don't think you could serious your way through this thinking your gifts are going to open up more quickly. It just doesn't work that way. Do y'all get that? <laughs> um, Karen says, it's funny, I got that on a spirit reading. Reading spirit did tell me I was here to play. LOL. Love it. Exactly. Okay. Now, Let's get to the first um, thing I want to cover, right? I'm going to cover three important tools um, for the remainder of our time together. So we're actually now getting to the official lecture. And just so you know, like for tomorrow, we won't have like this big old intro like today. Um, we'll just get straight into the lecture um, starting tomorrow. But let's get into the lecture for today. So the first thing to unleashing your inner psychic is you must honor your body first. And when I say your body, I'm talking about your physical body. Now, why is that important? Well, imagine or think about your body as your instrument, okay? We're all spirit and a body, and your body is like your instrument. It's your vehicle. It's the thing that takes you through space and time in our 3D reality here on this planet. And without a body, you wouldn't be able to have the kinds of psychic experiences that you're having, right? So the key point is if you're not taking care of your physical body, then tapping into your gifts actually becomes a lot harder, all right? It's, it, there's going to be more effort to it. You're just going to be having to work against all these other foreign energies. And, you know, um, I forgot who asked the question, what do we need to do? You know, what do we need to get prepared? Well, this is it, you guys, honor the body first. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, I want everyone to just close your eyes. And I know some of you are like, oh, I'm not a great meditator. Well, let me just say that you don't need to be a great meditator. If you could close your eyes and breathe, that's all you need to do in this program. <laughs> all right, so I invite you all to close your eyes. And again, if you're around other people, tell people like, hey, for the next 45 minutes, this is my time. Close your door, do what you gotta do. Now, with your eyes closed, one of the best ways to honor your body is to simply let it do what it does naturally, and that is to breathe. So everyone take a nice deep breath, and you could count to five or even count to 10 on the in-breath. Really no technique about it, it's just more controlling your breathing and then hold it for five to 10 seconds. And then slowly allow yourself to exhale five to 10 seconds until your lungs are completely empty. And go ahead and do that about three or four more times, just slow, relaxed, yet controlled breathing. And as you're breathing in this way, you might notice the tension in your body start to release. You might notice all the energy you've been holding on to. And you might notice 
that maybe it's been a while since you've allowed yourself to breathe this deeply. So talking about honoring your body simply by breathing. When you could begin to relax, slow things down. Then this sets the stage, this sets the stage for your gifts to naturally awaken. You know, sometimes we go through life so heightened or on alert. And yet when you could allow yourself to just simply breathe and relax, let go of your worries, let go of any obligations or responsibilities, just honoring your own body right now. This is the first step to unleashing that inner psychic. All right, so take one more deep breath and you can start to open your eyes. All right, so welcome back and just go ahead and comment, what was it like to simply just breathe? <laughs> funny I, i'll do readings on people and i could tell i'm like whoa look your energy just looks really wound up it's been a while since you've taken taken a nice deep breath hasn't it right they're like ah, i need to breathe more often all right so justin is saying it's calming great okay um uh, holly relaxing terry says relaxing as well rosa so relaxing i felt a lot of tingling Feels amazing every time, okay? So guess what? That took all of not even three or four minutes and look at all the tension, releasing, the relaxation, all right? So the thing is, you guys, when you can relax like this, you know, a lot of times when you get the 333, 777s or dreams or premonitions, you weren't thinking right? You weren't in a place of effort, especially when you're dreaming about to go to sleep, right? Then all these messages and communications of the spirit guides come in. Literally, your body was relaxed in that moment. And it's no accident that when you're relaxed, just like you did here, that sets the stage for your gifts to awaken, okay? All right, so let me know if that makes sense, right? That breathing, <laughs> Honoring your body first, right? That is the first step to, before you do any kind of energy work, number one is to breathe. Michelle says, <laughs> not irritated with my kids anymore. Love it, okay? All right, so let me just type it in the comments. Step one, honor the body and breathe. Minnie says, my cat came, sat on me. I think they feel when the release happens too and want to be near it. Oh yeah. Um, every time I do energy work, like you, you all saw my dog come in. It's like, oh, he's doing that energy work thing. That's when she starts to come in. I'm like, okay, <laughs> come on in. All right. So that's step number one, just honoring the body first, breathing. Now let's get to number two. And this is going to be a, a really simple exercise. With this one, I'm going to have you Open, start with opening your eyes, okay? And again, I haven't actually taught this um, really anywhere else. So this is one of those cutting edge things that, you know, I'm always thinking to myself, how can I accelerate people's access to their gifts? So in this next exercise, I'm calling this seeing in a new way exercise, seeing energy in a new way, okay? So, let me just talk about why this is important, seeing in a new way. Well, this is gonna be really important, especially when we get to third eye activation day. And you saw the schedule, third eye activation day is gonna be on day three and four of the challenge. Um, but I wanna just 
lead you through a mini exercise right now. So everyone just kind of, whatever you're doing, either you're looking at me on your screen, just kind of stare straight ahead, right? Now stare straight ahead, but what I want you to do is off to your periphery, even though you're staring straight ahead, just go ahead and see how your room looks or what is off to the side without actually looking to the side. You're literally just looking out of the corner of your eye. Now, for me personally, when I do this, like there's a door right there, right? And I see a doorknob. Now, I don't see the doorknob super clearly compared to if I was looking straight on at it, but I could still tell like off the, at the corner of my eye, I'm like, well, that's still a doorknob, okay? Or at the very least, I could see the door. I could see like the outline or like the peripheral of the door. All right, so go ahead and play with that. And after you play with that, again, this is play, amusement, exploration, like a child, right? Don't take this so seriously, <laughs> right? On my other side here, I see my fish tank, right? And I see, I see a, a few fish. I, I don't necessarily see the fish fish straight on like I do, right? But I could still tell they're fish, all right? And Heather, don't worry, um, the replay is coming soon, okay, after, after this, but you can still play along with us, you're, you're fine. We still got another um, about 30 minutes to go. All right, now just notice how it looks, okay? Now, go ahead and type in the comments, what is it like for you to see out of your peripheral vision? Again, for me, it wasn't the clearest thing, but I could still kind of tell that's a doorknob. I could still kind of tell that's a door over there. On my other side, I could still tell that there's fish over there, even though I'm not seeing the clearest picture, all right? So I'm gonna start to type in what your comments are, what your experience of that is. And let's see. Uh, Lori's saying, I see fog, I see like TV blurs. Okay, great. That's how I see it, it's like blurry. Um, Justin is saying it's hard for me when I stare like that, my aura viewing happens and becomes the focus. That's great, Justin, that's actually the goal, believe it or not, okay? Um, Terry, I can't move my, my eyes and can only see if I move my head and my eyes can't move, okay? Blaze says slightly blurry, Justine says fuzzy. Um, Rosa says, wasn't clear, kind of like a white cloud, but I could still see the outline. Love it. Great. Um, pretty easy for me, says Michelle. Uh, Zane says, fishbowl. Uh, not clear, but there. Perfect. Uh, I see like you do. Same blurred. Okay. Um, Shanita says, uh, shadows on the side, not hard. I can't see unless I move my head. All right. So Terry, it's more about, don't worry about trying to see it, right? It's how does it look? with your peripheral, okay? Um, and he says, like, taking my glasses off. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, just looks like an out-of-focus camera. Perfect. Bookshelves and windows all blurry. Perfect. Okay. Um, I can see and make out everything, just not clearly. It's like a, a hazelnut, uh, the outside. Awesome. Soft versus hard eye. Soft eye opens up more peripherally. Okay, great. Uh, and I'm just trying to catch up on the, all the comments. You guys are coming in really quickly. Also, just see the outline. Okay. Thanks for sharing, you guys. Right. Um, and again, the more you share, we all share in each other's experiences. You can learn not just from me, but you learn from each other. So great job. Love it. Now, let me tell you guys, when you are looking through your third eye, okay, it's very much like looking out of the corner of your eye like that, looking out of your peripheral. Don't expect that you could see out of your third eye, just like you're seeing me on the screen right now. Does that make sense? Okay, it's not going to be clear like that. It's just not. So when I talk about learning a new, it's like learning a new language, right? Literally, it's like you're going to learn a whole brand new way to see the world, right? Okay. So some of you still commenting, hazy energy, I see everything in peripheral, blurry, but left eye works independent. <laughs> okay, 
Uh, Christina says a little blurred, but I can see the outline of the door. Perfect. Okay. So if y'all are at least seeing the blurriness of it all, maybe at the very least you could see the outline. Again, I'm, I'm still trying to like look at, at my peripheral and see like I could see the doorknob. I could see the color of it. That's not the clearest thing, but I still know it's a doorknob. Okay. I can make out that it's a doorknob. All right. So that's exercise number two. Okay. I just want to give you a preview of that so that when we do get to day three and four, third eye activation day, right, that you know to expect, at least by the time we get to that point. All right, so is all this making sense so far, right? Just seeing out of the peripheral, don't expect to see it just like you're seeing me clearly in front of you. When you start tapping into your third eye, it's like looking out at the corner of your eye, okay? Um, Joe asks, um, when looking to the third eye, do you see color? Absolutely, all right? And we're gonna definitely cover that on day three and four of the challenge. Um, you know, energy doesn't necessarily have a color, but in your mind's eye, in your third eye, you're going to see that energy represented as a color. And colors are just frequencies, and frequencies are information, right? So you're going to, that's how you're going to get the information. Again, we'll cover that more um, in depth on days three and four. But for now, if you could get the whole corner of the eye experience, then you've accomplished that for today, okay? Huh? Uh, Justin says that technique you showed us just now, Joe, is also how I see when I see our angel sparks appear. Starts in peripheral, but eventually happens in direct view, just a bit hazy. Perfect. Okay. That's exactly how I see things too. Okay. So it's fun when people like learn it on accident. And even for me, when I told that story of like seeing the glow of light, at first it appeared on my peripheral. And then I started looking up at that thing. I'm like, oh, whoa. Okay. Just know they don't always show up super clear like that, right? Um, most times they're going to come out blurry, okay? Or like a silhouette or out of the corner of your eye. All right, so that's yet another piece of homework, you guys, okay? Um, breathe and practicing out of the corner of your eye. Like literally walk around the block after this and, you know, see out of the corner of the eye, uh, out of the corner of your eye, okay? <laughs> All right. Now. The next tool I'm going to teach you today, and again, we're going to go maybe about another half an hour, you guys, so uh, thanks for bearing with me. Again, we just did more intros in the first half, and now we're more on the lecture if you're just joining. All right, what I'm going to teach you next is how to ground, okay, how to ground, and just like honoring the body, Grounding is yet another way to honor the body. And yet when you're grounding, okay, it helps you to release foreign energies out of your space. And why is releasing foreign energies out of your space important? Well, it's those foreign energies that can block your third eye in the first place. Okay. And not just your third eye, but all your other gifts too. Right. It'll block your clear audience, it'll block your telepathy, it'll block your mediumship, block your channeling all of that, okay? So I'm gonna teach you how to ground now, um, and I'm gonna have you do this more with your eyes closed in meditation, okay? So go ahead and close your eyes now. Everyone take a nice deep cleansing breath. Again, honor your body. All right. Now, in your mind's eye, Go ahead and imagine a green ball of energy right at the base of your spine and have this green ball of energy be as wide as your hips. Now you may or may not see a really clear green ball of energy, but just like looking out out of the corner of your eye, just looking at your peripheral vision. Maybe you might just see the silhouette of it. Maybe you just might see the outline of it. And again, have fun and amusement, explore what it's like seeing energy with your eyes closed like this. And if at the very least, if you are having trouble seeing it, at least intend for it to be there. And you might only see a flash, like it just might flash in your mind's eye. 
right? That's fine too. And you might notice maybe a different, different shades of green, maybe a dark green, light green, whatever shows up for you, it doesn't matter. Just play with the fact that a green ball of energy is just forming right at the base of your spine as wide as your hips. And everyone keep your eyes closed and stay with the meditation here. Now, imagine that this green ball of energy has some weight to it. And imagine that the gravity of the planet can now just pull down this green ball of energy and it drops all the way down, 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 down to the center of the planet. Kind of like being on the top floor of a building and just taking an elevator ride down. And in the process, it leaves behind a green tube of energy. And it, you can imagine that this green tube of energy is as wide as your hips. Imagine that once this green tube of energy extends down to the center of the planet, which by the way, the center of the planet is about 5,000 miles down. And just to give you some perspective for me to drive from San Diego to San Francisco, for example, that's like a 500 mile drive. So you can only imagine what 5,000 miles is. And then you could begin to imagine that just like the trees that are rooted outside, that by giving yourself a grounding cord, I call this a grounding cord, that by connecting your physical body to the planet in this way, it helps the body to feel rooted, safe, secure. And the thing is with working with energy, sometimes you'll encounter some energy that can make you feel floaty or trancy. It just comes with the territory of awakening your gifts. So by being rooted, it just helps the body to feel safe and secure. So go ahead and validate that feeling for yourself of feeling rooted, just like a tree is rooted outside in this way. And when I say validate, all I mean is that even though you're imagining this, Even though you're imagining it, you could still feel it all. And it just makes it more real, even though you're imagining it. Awesome. Now everyone take one big deep breath. And if you are getting too deep into trance, just kind of come back more to the surface. This is not a deep meditation although your body might be extra relaxed now, that's fine. Now imagine that any energy that's not yours, any foreign energy, could be other people's energies, it could be a heavy energy, it could be a staticky kind of energy, they might show up as like darker versions of any color, like a dark green, dark brown, or they might show up as faded versions of any color, like a faded orange or faded blue. However they show up. Imagine now that you can give these some weight and allow gravity to take hold of these and Imagine that you could literally just drop 
these down your grounding cord. It's kind of like if you were to take a brick and drop that brick down into a well, a deep, deep well. And then you just allow these to fall away, release out of your body. And the more that releases, maybe the lighter you start to feel, And some of you might literally feel things leaving your body. Others of you might feel, it might feel like things are sliding away, kind of like a kid going down a slide. And all that just goes down, 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 down to the center of the planet. And imagine that when it gets there, it all just goes, just bursts into millions of pieces. And then you just, it's like handing it off to Mother Earth. And just let Mother Earth recycle that energy for you. You don't even have to worry about it. We all have a healing agreement with this planet to release, let go, recycle. And go ahead and validate the release. And now everyone take a nice deep cleansing breath. And I invite you, after you take that nice cleansing breath to open your eyes now. All right, so welcome back. So that's what we call grounding, okay? So the technique was create a green ball of energy at the base of your spine allow it to drop to the center of the planet, leaving behind a green tube of energy. We call that a grounding cord. It helps you to feel anchored. And it also gives like energy in your space. It gives it somewhere to go, okay? Somewhere to release. And it's like you're handing it off to Mother Earth in the process to recycle for you. All right, so go to, um, in, the, in the comments, just uh, share your experience. What's your questions? Uh, what was it like for you to ground in this way? Okay. All right. So I saw some comments coming in already. <laughs> Blaze is saying, is it normal to get dizzy? Yes. It, at least in the beginning, um, the more you practice this, the more you'll get be able to relax into it. Okay. And this is why we start with honoring the body first. You always want to take a few deep breaths before doing any energy work. Because yes, it can happen where, yes, you can start to feel dizzy, trancy, but by being grounded in this way, right, then you're less likely to float off, lose your psychic space, all of that, okay? All right. Uh, let's see, the comments came in so quickly. Let me see if I can catch up here. Uh, that was wonderful, tingling all over. My eyes started to twitch, <laughs> all right? Love that, felt very relaxed, felt like a vacuum. I get tingles. By the way, someone asked, is it normal to get tingles? Yes, it's normal. It's a sign of movement of energy, okay? Tomorrow I'm gonna to talk more about energy in particular, but yes, you will feel tingling sometimes. Uh, let's see, Blaze, my inner vision was rotating black to white. Okay, great. Um, and just have it be, you guys, like if you start to see things, just notice and just have it be that the universe is trying to show you something and it's no accident that that's what you're seeing. Holly says grounding is very relaxing, feels great, feels great. Um, Rosa says, I usually use my feet as roots coming out. What's the difference between the root chakra and feet? You know, um, that's just how I was taught, right? And really the difference is, and for, I know some of you are, are talking about like different techniques that you've learned, um, just play with it right? See what works for you. Um, the way I'm teaching you right now is more specific to waking up your psychic gifts, all right? You might have learned another, I know I've, I've had many Reiki students come in uh, or come my way, and they have like a whole other way to ground that helps them ground when they do Reiki, okay? So at least the way I'm teaching you now, um, it's more like 
what I what I was taught. So I'm just passing on information. Okay. Um, Nathan says that was amazingly helpful. Awesome. I definitely felt things dropping out of me. Great. I needed that release, says Heather. Uh, visual gave me moving side. Uh, I felt slight pressure in the back of my head. Okay. Whenever you feel pressure, you guys, that's a sign of release. That's actually a good thing. All right. Uh, it's like literally 15 comments <laughs> came in. So I can't read all of them, but I am skimming at least um, to see if any questions are coming up. Lori says, my third eye was throbbing. My spine felt burning and movement, little floaty energy, felt blue, violet energy. I didn't feel alone again. Throat, six chakra opened up, opened right up. Awesome. I'm glad like a lot of you are already getting the validation of movement, okay? And again, you guys are like, it's your people ask me, is this just my imagination, right? Yes, it's your imagination because we are playing in that same space as your imagination. But just know that when you can actually feel the movement based on your imagination, that's where the validation comes in, okay? Now, you may or may not feel it, right? Don't think you have to feel it. As long as you could see the movement of it all, that's all part of it, all right? As she says, tingles, kind of sleepy, LOL third eye was trying to show me a building structure. Awesome, I love it. Okay, and by the way, you guys, um, some of you are like, oh, you know, I don't know if I saw that green ball of light correctly. Again, it's kind of like how you would look out at your peripheral. So there you are, your eyes are closed. Have it be kind of that same experience, all right? You're not gonna see the clearest picture, but if you could imagine it like you're looking out of the corner of your eye, the very least see it like a silhouette or outline. Um, you might see a blur of a color, <laughs> that's fine too. All right, Shanita says, I got very relaxed, awesome. Now, one more thing, you guys, in the last 10 minutes here, when you clear like that, right? When you clear like that, you don't want to leave your space empty. So what are you going to do? You're going to fill in from the release, any empty spaces, you're going to fill in with your own energy. I'm going to show you how to do that now. All right. So everyone go to close your eyes. Take another deep cleansing breath. Again, honoring the body. All right, honor the body before you do any kind of energy work and just breathe. Awesome. So now go ahead and just play with your grounding. See if there's anything else ready to release and you see how your grounding cord shows up. Again, imagine it like you're, how you would see it out of the corner of your eye. Don't expect to see like a super duper clear picture. It doesn't work that way, especially with your eyes closed. And don't worry about trying to do this right or Am I doing this the right way? It's more like be that kid. Remember, kids don't know right or wrong. They just play. <laughs> All right, and then still get that sensation or sense of things going down your grounding cord, releasing. And don't force anything, you guys. You're going to release what you're ready to release. Take a nice deep breath. Now, go ahead and take a look or get a sense of the empty spaces now. Your, your space should be a little more clear. And when I say your space, it could be your aura, which is basically your energy field around you, or it could be your body. Maybe parts of your body are feel lighter now. Just honor that. And what I want you to do is go ahead and imagine about three feet above your head. Three feet above your head. Imagine that there's a golden ball of energy, like a golden sun. And again, it might just appear, you might not get the clearest picture, 
Might just be like how you would see things out of the corner of your eye, silhouette, or at least the outline of it. And you're gonna learn more and more as you work with me that we use gold because gold is a very high vibration. Gold shows up in a lot of spiritual traditions and it's no accident that gold is like a very valuable metal. So just imagine that golden sun and have it be about three feet tall, three feet wide. You can imagine you're looking up at that gold sun right up above you. And imagine you could take your psychic finger and imagine you could write your name in magnetic ink in the middle of the gold sun. And just see your handwriting. Is it in cursive, block letters? And the reason for writing your name in magnetic ink is by doing so, you're tuning this gold sun to your energy. You're tuning it to your frequency and you're tuning it to the energy that's unique to you and only you in the whole entire universe. It's your name, it's your handwriting. And imagine now that the gravitational pull of this gold sun just calls all your energy back to you. And imagine that your energy comes back to you. It's kind of like gathering the pieces of you that you've left behind from the past from other people, from places, projects. And you could just imagine these little pieces of you drifting up into the gold sun. And as more and more of your energy comes back, perhaps the golden sun gets larger and larger. bringing your energy to a high gold present time vibration. And now when that gold sun is all nice and full, you can imagine now that you could allow the, all the golden light from this gold sun to pour in through the top of your head, your crown chakra, which is right on the top of your head, and just like pouring water into a glass, you're pouring this golden light into your body. And imagine that every single cell of your body fills in. All your chakras, energy channels, and even your aura, your bubble around you, bubble of your own energy. And just imagine being surrounded by so much golden light of your own energy that you can breathe this into your lungs even. And go to validate what it's like to be surrounded by your own energy, your own vibration, your own information. And really validate that when you can get to know your own energy more and better in this way, when you do start to read different kinds of energies, now you could tell the difference. Oh, this is my energy. Ah, oh, that's something else. So you're starting to discern, tell the difference. All right, take one more deep breath. And now you could open your eyes. And I invite everyone now to, as you're opening your eyes, you could stretch out, relax. 
Maybe you might want to just touch your toes. And the reason why I have you stretch out in this way is just to remember you have a body. I know it's easy. Many of you are saying, oh, I feel really dizzy, trancy. So by stretching out in that way, it just helps you to remember, oh yeah, I have a body. And remember rule number one, honor the body first, okay? Now, go ahead and type in what was your experience like after you know grounding and clearing to then replenish, all right, replenish, filling in with your own energy, all right? And if you have any questions, um, I'm going to spend some time. I know we're at the 90-minute mark now, but I'm going to spend some time. I'll, I'll stay around to answer any questions that you have, okay? Um, but before I do, and I know some people like you mark in your calendar 90 minutes, before you go though, um, for those of you sticking around, you know, feel free to stick around, but for those of you that have to leave, let me just remind you, remember to type in hashtag day one live or hashtag day one replay if you're catching the replay, okay? Remember at the end, I'm gonna do a drawing, um, five winners and you can get a psychic reading with me. Top prize is a 90 minute deep chakra healing. So you definitely wanna get in all your hashtags in, okay? Um, so you could qualify for that. And as well, tomorrow night, we are meeting at 6 p.m. Pacific, and that would be 9 p.m. Eastern. And same thing, I'm going to go live inside Facebook. Just catch me on the live. Um, you might have to refresh your screen a few times to catch the live um, broadcast, okay? So th that's for those of you that have to leave now. Um, thank you for joining us. But for everyone else, if you want to stick around, if you have any questions at all, um, stick around, okay? I'll stick around till I answer all the questions I can. Um, all right, so let me catch up on comments. Literally saw like 50 comments come in. <laughs> uh, and sorry if I miss your comments here. Um, someone asked if it's okay to like feel like you're dozing off. And yes, it will happen. You're going to feel dizzy or like you're dozing off, but that's part of being in a trancy space. But that's why it's so important to ground you guys. That way your body won't feel too floaty. And then next thing you know, you're so deep in meditation. You're like, oh, I don't even remember what I saw, <laughs> right? So you don't want to go too deep in meditation, all right? Um, something like bliss. I love this whole meditation. Justin says, definitely felt the connection to the gold sun, felt it in my crown, my third eye. Um, <laughs> Michelle said, I feel full, but light at the same time, refreshed, warm and comfortable. Um, Lori says, okay, while doing this, I've seen an angel figure in white, couldn't see face, but warm, calm, love felt awesome and calm, awesome. Yeah, Lori, same thing, right? You're, you're not you're gonna make out the face so clearly because again, it's like looking out of your peripheral, right? So you're gonna hear me say this over and over again throughout the challenge. Don't worry about trying to see it super clearly. If you see it out of the corner of your eye, like you're looking out your peripheral, you're actually doing great, okay? Um, again, this cutting edge stuff, you guys, I haven't taught in this way, the whole peripheral thing. So you guys are getting a real good treat. And you guys are doing awesome, by the way. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Angela said, I fell asleep during step four and five. All good. The replay will be available shortly. You could always repeat. And by the way, this is your homework, you guys. Okay. Practice that whole thing of looking out, the perf out of your peripheral and right ground, honor the body, fill in with a gold sun. And do that like three or four times between now and tomorrow, right? That's your homework. So, uh, and if you have any comments as you go, feel free to com post your comments in the group. All right, got big flashes of gold. My ear doesn't stop ringing. I felt energy all over my body. Yeah, the ringing the ears, you guys, sometimes that's just a sign of spirit trying to make contact, okay? Um, you could just push those beings off to the side for now. Say, hey, I'll talk to y'all later. <laughs> All right, uh, Jacqueline, I feel so much more clarity than even three hours ago. My throat chakra is spinning so much as I write this. What a beautiful experience. Thank you, Joe, everyone. I was playing with this uh, gold, golden rose energy, like putting your hand in rotting water that splashed in the mist, so, uh, incredibly soft, with whipped streams of gentle light. Love it. Thank you for sharing. It's awesome. Um, and again, I can't get to everyone's comments here, but I am reading them. So, uh, Warm and tingly, says Nathan. 
Uh, Michelle says, my eyes started going crazy. It's not the first time. Top half of my face started twitching. Yeah, let me talk. If any of you have had the, the twitching of the eyes, um, it's almost like, you know, like how they say your, I forgot the name of the thing, but um, when your eyes go back and forth, right as soon as you're about to dream, right? Your REM cycle or whatever it's called, in a way that's what's happening, right? Now you're starting to tap into different visual things, okay? In the beginning, you're gonna, you might experience that a lot, um, but the more ex you get into this, you'll get less of that twitching. Uh, did that make sense? Although it's like difficult, a challenge to put physical feelings into sensible words, yeah. Um, let me just talk about for a little, a tiny bit here that yes, you will see things, okay, in the world of energy, and sometimes words just are not enough to describe it all, okay? But just go with it, okay? You're gonna experience, you're gonna see energies that you're like, whoa, I've never encountered that before. But this is yet another reason why we ground, okay? Just because something's unfamiliar, it doesn't mean it's bad, right? Um, but yeah, you will, to your point, Jacqueline, yes, you will have times where, you won't have to, um, uh, you won't have the words for it, I mean, okay. <laughs> Maybe said more parts of my body want to get twitchy. This is why we breathe, okay? Just remember to breathe. Um, I went too deep, <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. Um, if you went too deep, you know, this is why there's practice. Again, play, have it be like a kid, right? It's like, oh, make fun of yourself even. Like, oh my God, I went so deep, right? That's what kids do. They just laugh at themselves. <laughs> Kathy, is it normal to burp? Uh, is that a release? Yes. And some of you might have had tears. Let me know if you've had tears rolling down your face or you wanted to yawn, right? Those are all signs of releasing. And when you start grounding, yeah, you're going to start yawning, releasing, burping, all of that. I need a toes twitching. Um, is it normal to get pain and right eye and third eye at the same time? Yeah. So just consider that when you feel pain, throbbing, consider that maybe you have had a lot of stuck energy in your third eye. And because now the energy is in movement, because it's releasing all of that stuck energy, you're literally feeling it release. All right. And the funny thing is we're not even on third eye activation day, but that's a sign usually of your third eye starting to activate, okay? Um, so don't freak out, it's normal. Um, even to this day, like if I know I'm gonna encounter a big energy, um, like my third eye is already starting to throb. Oh, there are like 27 new comments, you guys. Uh, let me see, um, I can't read all of them. I definitely will catch up with them after the broadcast though. Okay, uh, yeah, Heather's like, I went to the <laughs> crying like crazy since, says Nathan. Shanita, I wanted to stay longer, but all life forms hid from me, knew I wouldn't be there long. Going back 20 seconds. Okay, I think that was just a comment from earlier. Um, how long does pain in third eye and crown supposed to last? Great question. Um, by the way, you guys, um, this is like Q&A time. We're, we're done officially with the lecture piece of it all. So I'm going to stay around. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to type those in. And while you have me live, you may as well ask, okay? Um, so I'll probably go for another 10, 15 minutes here, max. Um, Joe asks, how long does a pain in third eye crown supposed to last? The more you practice these tools, okay, um, the less that you're going to feel all of this releasing and pain, okay? And just consider that many of you are already highly sensitive to begin with, right? So you're gonna experience it as more painful than say the average person, all right? But just stay with it, okay? Just continue to ground, allow yourself to release. And over time, it's gonna be less and less of like that pain, okay? All right. Uh, let's see. Joe, thank you so much for this. I'm so looking forward to working with you and everyone tomorrow. I must go and wish you all love and light. All right, Jacqueline, thanks for, for joining. And again, for those of you, like we already reached our official 90 minutes. That's how long I set each of these for. Um, but usually by this time, we're just doing Q&A. 
Uh, Shanita, I have no idea. I'm not sure what that's referring to. Um, but if you had a question or you wanted me to clarify, just let me know. Um, Lisa says, bright lights are bothersome to me. Is that normal? Yeah, so same thing, Lisa. You're going to encounter things um, because you're highly sensitive, like bright lights. Um, it's just too much energy, okay? So yeah, um, I, I've had students like even, this was back in the day when I used to teach in person um, they would come in with a hat and they're like Joe I can't handle the lights <laughs> of the room so and they literally needed a visor because they were just so light sensitive just sensitive to energy in general all right so no it's not unusual especially if you're a highly sensitive person uh, let's see uh, Christina, thank you so much for taking time to do this. Already super excited about tomorrow. Awesome. Um, Charlene, can you take a look at a picture of the ancestor and hear them speak to you? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and sometimes beings, especially beings without a body, they just need something. And it could be your thoughts. It could be your prayers. It could be a picture. Okay. They need something in order to be here because it's hard to be here without a physical body anymore. Right. So even a, like a symbolic representation, like a picture can be like a temporary thing for them to be here. All right. So absolutely. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth asks, how much practice would be considered too much practice? LOL. Yes, you can overdo it with energy and you'll know you've overdone it because um, when people, when students overdo it, they'll be like, oh, this stuff is not working anymore. Right. Well, consider that you're just either A, trying too hard, or B, you're overhealing yourself. You don't need any more healing. <laughs> All right. So you'll know. You just have to trust your intuition. Okay. And what I'm teaching you guys, the reason why, literally, just so you guys know, I could have taught this all in one day, right? All, all stuff in this five day challenge all in one day. But I want y'all to pace yourselves. There is such thing as overhealing. Um, there is such thing as too much energy at once, okay? So pace yourself, show up every single day, right? And you'll naturally um, not overdo it because this is spread out over five days anyway. <laughs> uh, Mason says, thank you for doing this. Love and light to all. Um, Kathy asks, what does it mean when you feel a pulling cessation around neck, chest, and shoulders? You know, um, on day four and five, three, four, and five, especially, we're going to get into what does it mean, right? Because you get three, three, three. Well, what does it mean? I saw this blue light. What does it mean? I saw this angel looking and staring at me in the face, but not saying me anything. What does it mean? I felt this thing in my shoulder. What does it mean? Just know that on day three and four, we're going to get to um, how to tap into your higher knowing for the meaning of it all, okay? But for now, just trust your intuition. What does your intuition first tell you about all of that? Okay. Um, so practice that. And then when we get to day three and four, we'll get do a deeper dive into all of that. Um, I've had where I become completely numb to my body. Uh, this is Rosa. I were completely numb to my body, like an outer body experience right before going to sleep. Can't hear, feel anything. All of a sudden, is this normal? Yeah. You know, the thing is your body, or, or your soul, not your body, your soul is wanting to travel up to the astral plane, okay? And in the astral plane, right, it, you know, it's kind of like the opposite. You're, you're describing the opposite. It's, it's kind of like when you wake up from a dream, like you're falling, and then all of a sudden you wake up, right? Um, what's happening to you, Rosa, is kind of the opposite. When you leave the body, it's like, ah, uh, your body just wants to go to sleep. It's like, ah, uh, you're, you're doing that astral travel thing. Then the body's like, okay, it's time to go to sleep, right? The thing is, sometimes you could be conscious of that. You just don't know, you know, now you're giving it a name. You're astral traveling, okay? So, yeah, that's normal. Totally normal. Okay, I see. All right. Um, I don't see any new questions coming in. All right. So, with that... Oh, Heather, last question here. Let me answer this last question. What does it mean when you see a dark figure? All right. So I'll just know that, again, when it comes to this work, you're going to see things, you guys. A dark figure, an angel, a color, a symbol, 
Um, you might see a purple dog. I don't know. Like things will just show up. Okay. Um, when you see anything, whether it's a dark figure, whether it's a symbol, color, um, what we're going to cover on day three and four is getting the meaning of it all. Okay. But again, the coaching for you for now is literally just trust your intuition. Okay. And let me just plant the seed that your intuition go with that first thing. Okay. Go with that first thing before you start overthinking it all. <laughs> right. And, you know, just because, and just let me just say, just because you see a dark figure, it doesn't mean it's bad. Okay. It could be a being, but maybe the being's just not showing itself clearly to you yet. All right. So just go with that. Um, can you control astral travel? Yes, absolutely. And in my more advanced training, I we definitely cover like astral traveling and tapping into the astral, dream interpretation, like all of those things you could um, get to by working your third eye and by working your clairvoyance. All right, you guys. So that is all I have for today. All right. Very excited that y'all joined today. Very excited that y'all are going on this journey. I'm excited for what's going to open up for you. Again, stay tuned for tomorrow. We go live once again, but this time it'll be at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, and every time zone in between and around. All right, so definitely save the time, day in your calendar. Um, tomorrow we are going to be covering the three energies blocking your gifts and psychic protection, so you definitely don't want to miss that. All right, that's all I have for today. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Um, remember, if you watch the replay, do hashtag day one replay. If you're live, hashtag day one live. All right, I will talk to y'all later. Bye for now.